Thank you for purchasing a Dell Inspiron computer. Whether you're new to Dell products or an experienced user, this video guide is designed to make it quick and easy to set up your new Dell computer. This program also includes instructions for changing options in the media bay, adding and removing PC cards, and replacing the palm rest inserts. We'll also show you how to set up a printer and the optional advanced port replicator. Before we begin, keep in mind that setting up the computer and the operating system could take as long as 15 minutes, and it should be done without interruption to make sure the operating system is properly installed. Okay, let's start with the basics. Unpack the shipping carton and remove the items shown on the front of the Start Here document that came with your computer. At a minimum, make sure you have the AC adapter and the AC adapter power cable. Depending on the options you purchased, you may also need one or more of the following items. A telephone cable if your computer has an internal modem, a modem cable if the computer has a PC card modem, a network cable if the computer has an integrated network adapter. Now you're ready to get started. Begin by connecting the AC adapter power cable to the AC adapter. Then plug the AC adapter power cable into a wall outlet. The small light on top of the AC adapter should now come on. If it doesn't, check to see that all the connections are secure. And finally, plug the AC adapter cable into the connector on your computer. There's already a partially charged battery installed in the computer, but you should use AC power now to allow the battery to charge while you're setting up the operating system. Dell has installed all of the devices you need to complete the operating system setup. Don't attach any additional devices or PC cards to your computer until you set up the operating system. If the computer has an internal modem, connect a telephone line to it as you see here. Be careful not to connect a telephone line to the network adapter connector, as this can damage your computer. If the modem connector has a plastic cover, you do not have an internal modem. Check for a PC card modem. Do not remove the cover from the modem connector. If the computer has a Dell installed PC card modem, plug the modem cable into the card. If the computer has an internal network adapter, connect a network cable to it. If the network connector has a plastic cover, you do not have an internal network adapter. Do not remove the cover from the network connector. Finally, open the display and press the power button. Follow the on-screen directions to complete the Windows operating system setup. One more thing to remember before we go on. If you have a problem while you're setting up the operating system and you need to restart the computer, do it by simply pressing and holding the power button until the computer turns off. This could take as long as 10 seconds. Then press it again to turn the computer back on. Don't use any other procedure, such as a combination of keyboard strokes, to restart the computer during the setup process. By the way, your touchpad won't work for the first few minutes because the appropriate software drivers aren't loaded yet. The touchpad will become operational during the operating system setup. When you complete the Windows setup, your computer is ready to use. Your computer comes with a floppy drive already installed in the media bay. However, you can replace the floppy drive with a variety of other devices, such as a DVD drive, a CDRW drive, or a second battery. Before you start, be sure that the computer is shut down and that the display is closed. Then turn the computer over so that the bottom is accessible as you see here. Slide and hold the latch release with one hand and pull the device out of the media bay with the other. Install the CD drive in the media bay. When it's in place, you'll hear and feel a distinct click to let you know that it's been installed correctly. Return the computer to its normal position. That's it. You're ready to restart your computer. Your computer comes with a CD drive, a DVD drive, or a CDRW drive installed in the fixed optical drive bay. You can also install a CD drive, a DVD drive, or a CDRW drive in the media bay. But using a CD or DVD works the same way for either drive. To use a CD or DVD in your computer, push the button on the front of the drive. When the tray opens, pull it out, 
Center the CD on the spindle and then press it down until the disc snaps securely onto the spindle. Push the tray back into the drive. Now you are ready to use the disc. One of the things you may do frequently is install and remove PC cards. Here's how that works. To install a PC card, hold it with the top side facing up and the orientation symbol, an arrow or a triangle, pointing into the PC card slot on your computer. Insert the card into the slot and press in until it is firmly in place in the internal PC card connector. If you feel a lot of resistance when you try to insert the card, don't force it. Double check the orientation and try again. After being inserted, most PC cards will be configured automatically to work with your system. If it is not, use the diskette or CD that came with the card to install the appropriate device drivers and any communication software described in the PC card's documentation. To eject a PC card, press the eject button to release the PC card and then pull the card out. To change the optional colored palm rest modules, turn the computer off and remove the battery and media bay device. Press the release button to disengage the palm rest module and then remove it. Align the palm rest module with the holes on the computer and then press it down until it snaps into place. Before you connect your printer, make sure you have completed the operating system setup. Click the start button, click settings, and then click printers. If your printer is listed, the software driver is already installed. If your printer is not listed, you will need to follow the instructions that came with the printer to install the software driver. Now turn off the computer, close the display, and connect the printer cable. If you have a parallel printer, connect the printer cable to the printer and to the computer's parallel port. Make sure you use an IEEE parallel cable no longer than 3 meters, or about 10 feet. If you have a USB printer, connect the USB cable to the printer and to the computer's USB port. Turn on the printer and then turn on the computer. If necessary, refer to the printer documentation for instructions on installing the printer driver from the installation CD that came with the printer. The optional Advanced Port Replicator, or APR, integrates your computer into a desktop environment. Before you connect or dock your computer to a port replicator, make sure you have completed the operating system setup and then turn the computer off. Also, to avoid networking problems, do not install any network PC cards until after you have finished setting up the port replicator's networking software. Plug the AC adapter into the port replicator. Don't connect a printer, scanner, keyboard, mouse, or any other device to the port replicator yet. You need to complete the docking profile first. Horizontally center the computer on the port replicator and then slide the computer toward the connector until you feel the grooves on the bottom of the computer engage with the alignment rails. Gently push the computer forward until the docking connector is fully engaged. Slide the eject locking lever toward the back of the port replicator to lock the computer in place. Carefully open the computer display and then press the power button on the port replicator. The computer automatically detects the network adapter and configures the software. When the networking software is fully configured, turn the computer off and attach any devices you want to use. The devices are available as soon as you restart the computer. To undock the computer, turn the computer off and then slide the eject locking lever to the eject position to undock and remove the computer. Depending on your computer's power management settings, your computer display may go blank after a period of inactivity to conserve power. If your display goes blank, press a key on the keyboard to resume operation. If the display does not turn on, press the power button. If the computer still does not resume, make sure you have a charged battery installed or plug in the AC adapter to ensure the computer has power. Then press the power button again. That concludes our presentation.
The information you've just seen, along with the printed Start Here sheet and solutions guide that came with your computer, and the Tell Me How help file, should provide you with everything you need to know to start using your Dell Inspiron computer. You can also press the support button to access Dell's support and educational resources. If you still have questions, visit Dell's technical support website at support.dell.com. You can also look in the solutions guide for a number to call. Thanks again for buying a Dell computer.